Hey, this is RCK, and I'm glad to have you back here again for our next episode of our Nazca game that we're currently playing. Here we've cast a couple of spells. Here we have Arcane Probing, found no sights, unfortunately, and we summoned some Condors. Had a few units die. We looks like we whiffed on two searches here. A uh, Freak Lord claimed, ran out very close. Um, a Freak Lord claimed the Throne of Thorns. Cool. Uh, we have a bunch of fights here. We see Relay starting to take some of Agartha, so that's pretty interesting to see. Uh, here we have Tian Chi. So this is a big battle, or not necessarily a big battle, but uh, for Tian Chi, this is a lot of his troops he has left over. Not a lot of sacreds, but his god is here, uh, which is kind of important. Has 420 HP. Um, yeah. Other than that, he does have lots and lots of mages here, so this is going to be a very, uh, very big loss on his part. So we have Storm up, some Elementals, we see some Gifts of Heaven coming down. But I just don't think that T and Chi's lines are going to be able to hold up against Van, uh, Van Heer's, uh, Van Heim's Blenders as we have them anyway. Some dwarves casting some spells back there. Some lightning bolts going off, and we see everybody gone, and that is it. So very big losses there from Vanheim, losing 10 Geomancers, 1 Celestial Master, and a Raven of the Underworld. Um, so, yeah, sure, okay, they're only 65 gold apiece, but, I mean, that is a lot of uh, fort turns there that they have lost, losing 10 of those. Um... So that is pretty important, only losing 8 vans in 19 Einheers. Uh, so pretty good on our side there. Next we have Naba hitting me. And it looks like they hit our white white mage that is sight searching. Uh, we'll go ahead and view that battle, make sure they get away. We have some Jin coming at us. They should just be on retreat. Yep, they're already leaving. Yeah, we don't want to lose all those boosters. That would be very, very unfortunate if he was on attack rear. Um, looks like he's on hold and attack rear, actually, so we will have enough time to get away there. Very good, very good. Uh, have a Harbinger and some Knights taking on 1PD. TNG fighting another 1PD. Vinyar taking out some PD, TNC taking out one PD, a lot of trading one PD back and forth here. Here we see eight red guard, a bunch of mages, nine geomancers, two ministers of magic. Was not really nothing. Ceremonial masters is up. H1 priest here. Then we see a larger army from Naba with 30 Jane Guard. And remember, he's already lost a lot of Jane Guard, lost a lot of mages. And I feel like this is the last that he really has here. Uh, anything to be scared of, maybe these Malakuts here. Other than that, a Jane Sorceress possibly threatening Foul Vapors. We're not too worried by that. He doesn't have any gems on him anyway. No, uh, only one air gem there, so not a lot of gems being used. Not very threatening at this point in the game. Only thing to worry about is the Jan Guard with their bless on them, but we should be okay. Most of our stuff do have magic weapons to bypass their invulnerability. Anything of real importance here? So we see... Vanheim losing a Dwarven Smith and a Van Jarl on top of Marignan. Looks like this is all that Marignan has left. It looks like those 53 crossbows are going to be a real pain in the butt for Vanheim. Um, other than that, maybe the Harbingers we also see his Pretender there. We'll just check that out just to see it. Oh, see, he was stormy. Interesting. Uh, Fire 5, Astral 5, Blood 5. Harbingers, just a whole, just an air three with a girdle of might. No gems. Light of the Northern Star, they have flaming arrows up. Just 
So I assume that this is the remnants of the uh, is it that this one here of this fight here. Um, I feel like Tian Shi moved his army into Van Heim's army that was sieging Marignan, which at the same time was set to storm. So that's why he had a weaker force going into this fight, I believe. Feel, yeah, I think that's the same amount of stuff he had up here. Um, if not, I mean, possibly he could have made it, but I th still think it would have been tough due to all the crossbows. They were hitting pretty hard. So that's interesting. We had a few events happen to us. Found a monster boar. That's good. Taking care of a lot of brigands. What are we moving over here? Forging a headdress, calling Sapayas, summoning more condors, forging a slave matrix. What's, what's moving though? So we're moving a Inca over to here. Why do we have gems on? Just elemental blessing attack. I don't know why I put two gems on them if I wanted them to die. Uh, we have a group of Runa going to hit these villains here. That should be an easy matchup for us. Uh, now that we see that Vanheim lost on inside of the fort, we're going to go ahead and move our slaves off because they'll definitely lose to any kind of pretender or anything in there. Um, with Vanheim not backing us up, we might as well move our chaff out of there uh, to try to save them to... Uh, we did leave one behind to continue the siege if they decide not to break out. Try to save them, save as much as we can. We also took this fort here. Did we see that battle? Yeah. I guess it wasn't much at all. We didn't really need to, uh... At the fortress of... Yeah. Nothing really. Nothing really to be, uh... Have to sit there and watch it. But we do see that Relay kind of cut us off here. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to 103. Um, that we could risk a bump here with Relay. But, you know, I'm not worried about losing that. Uh, do then push on to a Gartha and take a Gartha for ourselves. We may also see N try to move here to 121 and then pressure our Gartha as well. And, and we will take that fight. I th think we should be okay. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, also moving out to take 109 and 98. Going to hit 107. We have Vanheim on Nabaz Fort. Moving a lot of troops here. More than likely, this is going to be a force that will take Nabaz capital. Uh, moving them on 89. Moving another force over to 94. Leaving some slaves on top of 85. It is, uh, it is broken. We just have to storm it now. We're not going to storm it with slaves. We see a force here from Tian Chi, but I feel they might pressure us over here. But it's nothing to be uh, worried about. Two forces here. Trying to help out Marignan. We see another force of Ein here is at 48. So more than likely there's lots of bad there as well. We just can't see it right now. So uh, there'll be a secondary force to move up to try uh, to take Marignan again. But yeah, I feel like we are definitely taking care of Naba and Agartha on this side. There shouldn't be too much left with the armies we have moving up currently. Continuing to make slaves just about out of population. So we'll have to start looking for a new province to make slaves from. Uh, anything else of importance going on? Any kind of summons or items? Moving some water gems over, also moving some slave matrices over. Um, the reason why is because I'm trying to cast fog warriors without blowing up my communion slaves. But I think that it's probably just worth blowing them up just to get that such an important key spell off at times because... Um, our astral randoms on our Huron priest here do not have air, so they're taking more fatigue from a communion. But then I found out that innate spellcasters like the rural Malqui here, where's it at? 
uh, value cakes. Innate casters cannot be communion slaves of any kind. They can lead a communion, however, but it will be very taxing on slaves who will receive twice the usual amount of fatigue. So we're trying to slow down the amount of fatigue we're getting there. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to matter that much. We're just going to end up blowing those communion slaves up anyway and losing those uh, 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 slave items. But um, not too worried about it. We have plenty to go go around, and we will get two rounds of them. I mean, we get them back anyway. They're a little bit more expensive, and they'll be reanimators if we decide to reanimate with them. But anything, they can still sit at home and research. Uh, I already talked about that. I think that's about it for this turn here, honestly. Building a temple over here in 87... Um, don't really have much Dominion presence at all over here. Where is the Dominion button? There it is. Yeah, really don't have any Dominion presence at all over here. Kind of closer to Agartha, since these are uh, pretty much fairly new lands. Don't have a lot of temples or anything in the vicinity. Uh, but we are starting to push it over the river here. And once we take the throne of the Second Age, be able to push some more Dominion from there. Uh, pretty good... Uh, Province overall, three, at least a three gym site, or three gym province anyway, so that is pretty good. And another air gym from there. Hopefully some of this land is already pre-searched for air. That would be great um, to really boost up our air income. We're only at 10, but uh, hopefully we can get it a little bit higher. Research is at 1,800 right now. Two more turns to enchantment eight. It's going to give us master gen. Yep, master gen right here. We are going to be able to cast it, also giving us Thunder Fend and Fire Fend and Frost Fend. Uh, Frost Fend a little bit tougher to cast, but Fire Fend, Thunder Fend will be very, very easy. And then we'd go for Alteration 8, then 9, trying to go for Army of Gold, Army of Lead, which we would definitely be able to cast with our Priests. Uh, Thaumaturgy 4. What do we want Thaumaturgy 4 for? Uh, don't know why we want a Thaumaturgy for. It's a good question. I mean, Growing Fury is pretty good. At, but it's at 5. Gateway's good. Soul Slay. Not sure. Then Conjuration 6 and Construction 8. Sea King's Court. Bishop Fish. Even though we don't hold any underwater provinces. Great Eagles. We could do Flame Spirits and get higher fire. That will give us a fire 3. We need a fire booster though. It will give us a fire 4. Fire 4, make a helmet, go up to fire 5. Troll King's Court. Don't necessarily need it. Lamia well, Queen, can't cast that. Kind of tough. So that's what we have going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and head over to the next one here. Anything else to be said? Uh, still kind of the same kind of stalemate we're seeing here. Pan really beating up on Alm, Sumiyama beating up on Zabalba. Lots and lots of Zabalban force inside of there. Uh, anything else? No. Not really, we do need to work on getting this throne relatively soon. That is a very large, uh, or very, very high income province, or for gems anyway. So that's four, ast four astral, three nature. That's just seven income province. That is sweet. I need to pick that up. We have uh, the throne of eternal suffering, spreads dominion three, gets order plus one, productivity plus one, misfortune plus one. Uh, what is our skills looking like? I mean, order plus one, productivity plus one would be good. Uh, is it worth dropping into m one misfortune? Eh, probably. Probably. So that's turn 44. Let's go check out turn 45. Of course, if you remember in the last episode, I did not have turn 43. Let's just not have saved it. So we've cast some more Condors. Had a magic phase attack of one Van Jarl, Taking out some good chaff here. From TNG. 
Firebrand, Vine Shield, Armor of Knights, and Trident. Body. No, that's not this. Air Shield's first cast. Misform, Blessing, and they're going in. Oh, yeah, these guys aren't going to be able to really get past the Vine Shield very much, if anything, if the Celestial Master gets a lucky spell off. With the air Shield up, not really worrying about these bows here. And they're routing. Very good, very good. Uh, so one water sight. Harbinger hitting us, our Inca dying, which we wanted. Slaves, slaves. Uh, Vanyarl taking out more PD in a very small Geomancer group there. Harbinger relay hitting Bandar Log. Now interesting to see that for sure. Um, yeah, so it looks like relay is fighting Bandar Log in the end at this point. Just Harbingers. We took out two Harbingers, so that is pretty sweet there for sure. Our slaves doing slave work. Um, thankfully not routing. Uh, we did lose uh, some there. We lost a commander, eight slaves, and two Lamias to the Jin Warriors. Guess he didn't move them. Yeah, that must have been just a force that was falling behind these Jin. I guess he just didn't move them. Uh, the villains we spoke about last turn taken out. Us moving up closer towards Agartha. Uh, TNG taken out. Or a force that was moving to, uh, it looks like, uh, connect themselves to that other force. We magic phase on to hit the same Vanyar and also die. There were seven Red Guard in there that died, so that's very nice uh, to see them lose that. Uh, we see another Vanyar hitting somewhere else. Uh, taking out one of the five Geomancers, so that's pretty good. Also winning uh, the fight overall. It looks like the rest of them routed. Uh, losing 20 slaves here. Uh, defenders lost. So we captured one of the fortresses. So I guess we did storm it, interestingly enough. So we had barbarians attack uh, 165 slaves. We lost 54. So we lost just as many... Uh, uh, barbarians as they had there so that's interesting to see let's go this must have been the uh, throne there so it's very very good to see that we now currently own 85 and now that we do and we see a very large ass army from agartha show up we see in has moved away at this point Relay is at 135, and we're like, okay, we're going to go and hit Naba since we can reach all the way over there, uh, across the river, and a forest, <laughs> and a plains to hit Naba. Um, we'll just start flying troops here. So that is very, very good for us indeed. It looks like our slaves and our sun guard were not able to make it but our condors will be able to join in the battle we have plenty of slaves around we're going to move and hit 119 we're also going to hit 111 uh, this group of slaves will be moving on to the fort to help siege this is a very large group of mages moving on to the fort with a large group of condors uh, the slaves that just took 85 will also move on the fort we're trying to pop the fort in one turn and i think we will have plenty enough for it here we're summoning some more condors, calling some more sapayas. So we're at three, six, or so at twelve sapayas a turn now. Uh, really starting to get our uh, production up. Um, yeah, we're looking to make thirty a turn. Plus that, you know, we're going to be making a whole lot. Making a koya right now to twice born and uh, use. How many headdresses do we still have? No headdresses, so we're going to have to make a headdress. Not making one at the moment just because we don't have enough gems. I'm not going to alchemize any from the looks of it. But yeah, things are going well. I feel like we'll look at the script next turn. Or we could look at the script right now. So lots of Horde of Skeletons, lots of Strength of Giants being cast by our uh, Earth 2s with a couple of gems on there. Community Master, Power Spheres, Spheres Fog Warriors. So I think we have four slaves. Power Spheres get you up to four or get you up to three. Uh, four slaves get you up to five. 
And then you're able to cast Fog Warriors. Uh, Wailing Winds, Horde of Skeletons. After that, Horde of Skeletons, Strength of Giants. These are being cast on the Condors in the back. Divine Divine Blessing, Summon Air Elemental, Horde of, Skelet Horde of Skeletons. We have two slaves here. Or maybe it's just two slaves. I think we're not, we must be getting slaves from somewhere else. We're getting slaves from here. Maybe I just haven't scripted them for slave yet. Uh, Wailing Wind, Horde Skeletons. That's what the army was for. Um, Arrowfend on this one. Moving them all over there. But yeah, we definitely have enough to do uh, another thing. Or maybe it takes enough gems. How many gems does it take for Fog Warriors? Three? Pretty sure you can't go over three. I don't think you can cast for four. Yeah, I don't think he can cast for four. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Avoiding the army at two tw or at 121. We see Relay has moved off from this, so um, he's not going to just openly attack us. I would be extremely surprised if he did. And it uh, looks like he moved down to 83. So I'm okay with moving this force off of here. Uh, if anything, it'll take Agartha 1, 2... Or no, he wouldn't go over the river because he's got all the flame children with him. Or magma children. And I don't think he'll be able to make it to Matnaba in time to save them. Um, if anything, he can move back and try to take 129. Or he can sit in his fort. Sit in his capital there. He does have his Demolich. So, uh, first on the Demolich. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all we have here. I'm just dropping 1PD down everywhere, of course. Uh, not worried if they take out 1PD. We do need to take this province back here. Lots of uh, gems. Three, four gems that we lost from that gen raid. Very annoying indeed. Searching around for higher nature still. Uh, very good to see that Marignan did not break siege here. When we left one uh, Runa on the uh, fort there. Very nice to see that uh, stopping him for another turn. Uh, Vanheim, of course, taking out a lot of provinces around in the area. Doing a good job raiding. I feel like he's just rebuilding his forces. Getting his mages together in order to really deal with those crossbows. I feel like we can move over there, but we just don't have any armies in position. Uh, because we have Arrowfin. Um, but, unfortunately, Vanheim does not have that yet. Casting Arcane Probing. So let's go ahead and check out turn 46, the last turn for the episode. These are Golden Enchantments. So far, Ashdod has Eternal Pyre, giving him 20 Fire Gems. Uh, Bandar Log has Mother Oak, giving him 10 Nature a turn. Then Riches from Beneath, from In, so the same team there as Bandar Log. Uh, so Resources plus 20%. Uh, Dominion, so max 100%. Province income plus 4%. Uh, max of 5 Dominion. Uh, so we could get up to 20% extra income, I believe. And then income for mines plus 20% at a max of 100. So each one of those, as long as you have 5 candles, it's maxing 100% resources, 20% income, and 100% uh, from mines. So that's pretty cool. Trying to make some money. Uh, so that will be it for this turn. Let's go check out the last one here. Just wanted to cover those uh, if you were not familiar with them. There we go, 46. Okay, so we see the Divine Glyph, glyph here making a showing. Uh, kind of uh, risky. Those meteorite guard do hit pretty damn hard with their magic weapons. Uh, and there's also, you have to keep in mind, there's probably not a lab here for this glyph to leave with this turn. So he could be countered. Bob Living Water, Ring of Regen, Astral 6, Earth 7, Water 6, Fire 6. He also has a global enchantment on him. I believe that's the uh, Riches from beneath so it's very very risky uh these magic weapon dudes that hit kind of hard 
20 protection, 10% regen. He only has 40 hit points. He's got Astral Shield, though. That's going to help him out a lot. Liquid Body Fire Shield. Yeah, that's going to help him out a lot, too. It uh, has resistance to all the uh, damage. Pierce Blunt Slash. Is he paralyzed? Yeah, he's paralyzed. Diseased. Disease doesn't matter. He's inanimate. Hmm. Already seeing some route here. They do not like the fire. Yeah, if they would have got the full surround, I think they would have taken care of him. But they just did not, they were not able to make it to him, so. It's interesting to see. So let's watch the battle on the bar here. <laughs> Some me birds. And we see the bar has sadly fourth. This is going to be a good fight. We have all of our runa. Now these runa really weren't supposed to be in the uh, really big fight here. They're just used to siege. Um, we have our casters on some of these. They might be a little off. The fuck are they? The fuck? I don't think we scripted very well. No, they should be right over here. Oh, well. I guess with all the rune, it pushed the uh, condors back a little bit. No, they're, they're here. They're here. No, that's not the ones I'm looking for. Fuck. Oh, well. Uh, so let's see what happens. We have some spies here, though. Probably lose some Wailing Winds and Rain up. So already we know their casting going to be pretty crap. Uh, lots and lots of skeletons coming out to play. Condor should be hitting the back lines here. Yeah. So we did have Fog Warriors go off, thankfully. Um, I must have missed or either came back and redone the Communion. But our Communion could have exploded already. But it is okay. As long as we get to kill his army here. Uh, doing a good job taking out his mages. Jane Guard are going to take a little bit longer. But overall they will start to fall. Just so many skeletons at this point. Yeah, things are looking good. Air Shield Mistful or Fog Warriors. Anything else really. We have a few resistances, so it's going to help. Alright, so, as far as the battle went, we lost one Sapaya, 11 Condors, and two Priests. I bet those are the, yep, yeah, those are the slaves that blew the fuck up. I called it. Uh, he lost everything. All of his Jangard, all of his mages, I assume... There's not much left inside unless he has a god or something, but even then I think we should be okay. We're just going to run through these fast. Uh, we lost one of the slave groups here that were raiding. Some Jane guard killed one PD. Uh, scout was found. What the hell is that? Have a nice air three, water two, astral two, fire one. Some nice paths there we could use. Some wing and chews we're making. Some more condors we're going to be bringing out. Sapias casting twice for him to get another Koya that we'll probably be using inside of an army. Uh, here, what are we doing in particular? Looks like we're going to be using the Acela. Birds instead for some of the communion lifting there uh, just because they're less expensive than the priest we are storming this turn as well leaving one bird on top looks like we're going in with some stuff not all the slaves some of the slaves are moving away uh, 
slot support of skeleton, strength of giants, a lot of the same things. Uh, fire fin being cast there. I'm sure, we have arrow fin somewhere. Divine blessing, wailing winds. We have rain. That's what we brought the water gems for. We're gonna cast fog warriors again. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Working our way to army of gold, army of lead. Which that would be great to have indeed. I see some veins there. Whites. No, they're not veins. They're whites. Um, so yeah, moving to take back 107 again. Probably should hit 111. But we see that TNG force there. So I don't want to risk a bump losing anything on this. Uh, unless I have to. Uh, claiming this throne. Which gives everything plus one strength. So that would be sweet to have for sure. I'm making a bunch of scouts for us out of these provinces here. Uh, or at least having them here. So yeah, some of these provinces can make scouts. Moving so much shit back and forth. Um, so the province 30 here. Um, went ahead and moving all the slaves, all the uh, uh, slave hunters here. Moving them out, moving them over to 58. Are we sure we're moving them over to 58? Either 58 or 66 to uh, start capturing slaves there. Other than that. Making a skull staff. Making some additional skull staff. Moving out. Building temples. It's like I never have the damn. Yeah, I never have the uh, outline. Outline for the. Dominion anymore it seems. Uh, so yeah, Storming going to be taking out the ball here. That's going to be very great. They're pushing this uh, side of the battle in our favor. Um, as soon as we take the ball, we're going to move over. We take Agartha. <clears throat> well, actually, we probably could split up our forces and half to Agartha, and the other half over here uh, to start taking forts from Tian Chi. Because uh, I'm not going to double back down and come this way. I'm just going to push into TNG. I'm sure TNG will pull back from Marignan at that point. And at that point, Vanheim can finally uh, kind of consolidate and take Marignan uh, while also raiding the crap out of TNG. So I think that's how we're going to play it here. Now that we were in a 2v1 and we've... I'm about to take out one of the members. This last one's on his last legs. Uh, Vanheim was doing a great job just kind of holding them at bay, uh, being TNG and uh, Marignan. We're starting to see some more threatening celestial soldiers coming out. Uh, still a lot of uh, Geomancers, Red Guard, Footmen, a lot of chaff, really. But uh, yeah, we should be all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.